The quest to cover the best mains of every single character keeps chugging along as we reach our fourth entry in this series. If you've missed any of the previous entries where we covered some of the characters first introduced all the way back in Smash 64, such as Mario, Link, and Captain Falcon, be sure to check those videos out, but after this one. But before we jump into that, please check out ProGuides.com for our on-demand coaching through Instapro to help you get the most out of the time you're putting into Ultimate. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to Instapro along with a plethora of exclusive content. Check the link in the description to find out more about Pro Guides. We also got live classes every weekday at noon PST time, literally on this channel. If you're subscribed with notifications, you'll find out right away, right when we go live. So with that squared away, let's go right into talking about the best Yoshi main in the world, Ron. Ron may be most fresh in your head as a player who took the burnt of ire from players who weren't able to make the cut for the fall PGRU season, especially the Area 51 members, because Ron became this season's ranking gatekeeper as the 50th best player in the world. One major point of contention leveled against the Japanese native was his lack of attendance, especially seeing as he lives in one of the most stacked and active ultimate regions in the world. But this has been the case for Ron ever since he started playing competitive Smash 4 back in November 2015. In the period of time between this start and the end of Ultimate Predecessor's lifespan, Ron entered just 14 notable events. His record across these events were immaculate though. At only three of these, he missed top eight, with two thirteenths and a ninth, meaning that the worst performance of his Smash 4 career are better than the best will ever be. The strongest of these showings from Ron, who switched between Mario, Yoshi, and Luigi for matchups, was his first place finish at Sumibato 18, where he beat Hikaru and double eliminated Chuton to win an event without dropping a set. This incredible this incredibly weird resume shows a consistent skill across long stretches of time that gave Ron the unique distinction of being the highest ranked player on a PGR 100 that had never appeared on any of the 5 by yearly lists that led up to that final one. And like we previously stated, this bracket guerrilla warfare of Ron's, where he appears to randomly come out of the shadows to tear through bracket once every few months is something we're seeing in his ultimate career so far. He's only made an appearance in 6 notable events in a year plus that ultimate has been out, keeping up that consistency by making top 8 at 5 out of the 6 events. And that's all there really is to say about Ron. Hopefully we'll get to see him make his first trip stateside to compete in ultimate events sometime in the near future, but for now, we'll just have to cherish those far and few moments of joy when we get to actually see Ron's name pop up up an attendee list for an event. With that, we jump over to talk about Kirby, one of Smash's most popular characters for casual fans who haven't been able to make a huge impact on the competitive side of things since being released as one of the best characters in 64. His biggest highlights since then have come in the form of some of the series' most infamous clippable moments like Moon Knight taking down a famous Melee community member, the Crimson Blur, or Chudat ledge stalling Rishi's Fox after starting a Project M match with a Kirby side and refusing to give up the early lead. It really is such a shame that we're not able to see more of this adorable puffball because his neutral B allows him to copy the abilities of other characters and it's easily one of the most unique moves in the game. Check out our previous video on some of the best abilities Kirby can copy for a deeper dive into how it is able to spice up on so many matchups. But Sasui Shock from France has been doing his best to try to finally make Kirby a superstar once again in the Ultimate Era. With that enormous buildup, you could probably tell that he's still got a long way to go to get this done. On the sole French Ultimate PR that is out as of the writing of this video, Sasui Shock sits down as the 17th best player in his region, which is 16 spots away from the only globally ranked player that he gets to practice at, at Locals, Glutiny. Also, as a very quick side note, our mains, who's listed as number 13th best in France on that PR, has their three most listed mains as Incineroar, Ike, and Random. Bruh. In my years of researching every nook and cranny of the Smash community, I've never seen Random listed as someone's main on a PR, so I had to share. Anyways, Shashui Shock has been doing quite well as he works his way up the regional ladder to face off against France's wafting final boss waiting at the top for him. Before the 2020 season of Smash was put on pause, he got second at Magenta 4, taking a win from the 15 rank Otakuni's Link, got second at Smash for Glory, making a huge upset on Glutiny in round 2 of winners before being double eliminated by him when they met again in Grands, and got third at Bros Battle 1, winning sets over 19th ranked Enki's Pikachu and 10th ranked Griffin's Pokemon Trainer. Jishui Shock is a player competing at a radically different level than anyone else we've talked about so far in the series, and you could choose to view that in a negative light, but I instead think there's a different kind of joy to find in it. Like how because he's not nearly as big as some of the other big names, 
he's much more accessible. So if you're an aspiring Kirby main yourself, or maybe have had issues in that matchup, shoot him a DM on Twitter and maybe he'll help you out. And if you're more of a fan watching the game, maybe consider watching some French locals or keeping a closer eye to the scene to potentially catch some of the story of Ultimate's next big upsets in its infancy. And whether Shishui Shock is able to make a great impact on the competitive Ultimate scene in the future, he can at least be proud that he is the best Kirby main in the world at this moment right now. The last character we're going to be looking at in this entry is Ice Climbers with Big D, one of the few able to make one of Ultimate's most complicated characters work at the highest level and who has a pretty long history in the Smash scene. Despite his name only becoming more well known in the last year or so because of some of the big wins he's picked up over players like Zack Ray and Dark Wizzy, he's been around the Smash scene for quite some time now. He got his start in 2009 playing Ice Climbers in Melee, the game the character debuted in. With how early his career started, unlike many of Ultimate's best right now, we unfortunately don't have a clear record of Big D's early days. At the very least, we do know he attended and performed decently well at some events critical to Melee's history. This included 33rd at ROM, tying with Melee legends Drefin and Ryan Ford, and a 65th at Genesis 1, tying with more legends like S-Fat and Shroom. Big D unfortunately didn't rise at the same exponential rate in Melee as the players whose performances he was matching in 2009, but he did appear briefly on a British Columbian Melee PR in 2015 during a brief stint playing the game seriously again before going into Melee hibernation again at the end of 2016. Big D also dabbled in Brawl and Project M in his early career, as where he built up a reputation for mind games, reads, and creativity that he still carries with him to this day. This is best optimized by his combo video series called Brawl Smart, that strays away from the traditional combo video format, instead showing off clips that in his words are less about the strings and more about the reads and creativity. Within these clips, we all see Big D's affinity and skill with many more characters than just Ice Climbers and King Dedede being listed as a true main instead of a character he's known for now. He would be forced to focus on those characters even more as we move into Smash 4 era, where Nana and Popo were cut from the game due to hardware limitations on the 3DS. Big D still plays DDD on occasion in his latest entries, but because of the character's endless list of shortcomings, he played Mario and Captain Falcon much more often to have a better shot at winning sets. And unlike Melee, where he was a mid-tier player in BC, Big D dominated his region in Smash 4. For all eight of the region's Smash 4 power rankings for the first of spring in 2016 to the last that covered up until June of 2018, Big D was the region's undisputed best player. But Big D never picked up enough steam to turn this into global recognition during this era of his career as well. Also another fun detour, a local bracket for Big D that happened on April Fool's Day back in 2017 was never completely filled so his placement for singles is just listed as at least third on Super Smash Bros. Wiki. So many hidden gems in Smash history honestly. Anyways, that's all the backstory of Big D's adventure up until Ultimate, where his beloved Ice Climbers finally returned to Nintendo's latest entry in the series. He had honed his ability in Smash for a similar engine, but not having a character that allowed him to play the kind of game he wanted to and fully express himself wasn't there, but Ultimate had finally given him that final puzzle piece. Well, kind of. Ice Climbers are easily one of the most technical characters in Ultimate, so despite Big D's history, it was going to take a bit of time to figure them out. So he learned on his read-based playstyle and character diversity early on in the game's life cycle to start very strong with the fourth at Don't Park on the Grass and the second at Pinnacle 2018 using mainly King Dedede and Peach. But by the time Genesis came around in February, two months later, Big D had enough time to lab and feel comfortable enough to use Ice Climbers in Bracket, but still did defer to King Dedede on occasion during his run to 33rd grabbing a win over Mudes before losing to Rich Brown and Myron. This was one of a few entries in the Spring PGR campaign that made much more global headway than Big D had ever made in his lengthy Smash career leading up to it. But capping off the season with a gold medal at a C-tiered Emerald City 8 was only enough for an appearance on an X-Factor survey, but not for a top 50 spot. And with every passing day with the game, Big D and his fellow Ice Climber mains are finding more and more tricks that they can use in brackets on their opponents who rarely faced off against the character. Big D used his growing momentum to perform one spot better than he did at Pinnacle the year prior, starting off the fall for first place finish double eliminating Pandarian from the tournament. He then rolled into yet another first place finish at Smash Fest 5 this time, double eliminating Best Nest to win the event. And before the year was up, he hadn't grabbed a huge amount of wins against players that were ranked on a spring PGRU, but sets over Zach Ray, Proto Banham, and Dark Wizzy, combined of great regional major placements, were finally enough to give Big D the global recognition he had been building up to for over a decade, being ranked as the 49th best player in the world on the fall 2019 PGRU. He'll most likely be holding this rank for quite a while too, with the suspension of the PGRU until further notice based on everything that's currently going on in the world, which ends the lengthy tale of Big D for now. 
it'll be hard for him to pull off any of the crazy technical stuff he does in all these online events that have begun to pop up. But once we eventually get back to land, be prepared to have him develop some insane icy text during that time skip. And that's about it for this video. We unfortunately only got to three characters in this video, but we're starting to move a bit quicker, especially in this weird section of characters like Zelda, Dr. Mario, Falco, and Ganon that we're moving into. So let us know in the comments below which players for some of these upcoming characters that you think deserve a mention in the series. And if you somehow haven't already, make sure to scroll down below the video and subscribe to ProGuys and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any of the content on a competitive ultimate scene in the future.